So we're here today because the clock is ticking on a shutdown of our nation's transportation programs. And we're here today to call on the House to take up and pass the Senate Bipartisan Transportation Bill, which authorizes America's transportation programs for two years. It is fully funded and it saves 1.9 million jobs and creates up to a million new jobs. So we're talking about uh, close to 3 million jobs here that are on the line and the House is playing games and those games have to stop. We are so thrilled to have Transportation Secretary LaHood here. To me, he reflects just the best of the Obama administration. Comes to us a Republican who sets aside party loyalties to do what's right for America. And we'll be hearing from him. He will be our closing speaker. The House must pass this bill for the businesses and the working people of our nation, for the drivers of cars and trucks, for the users of public transportation, for the safety of our families in this country, and for this economy, which is moving out of the worst recession since the Great Depression. And make no mistake about it, this is the jobs bill. This is the jobs bill. You can call something a jobs bill, and you have no estimate of how many jobs it will create, like the bill on the floor today. You can call it a jobs bill with no estimate of how many jobs it might create. But this is a jobs bill. Make no mistake about it. And that's why we're here. We have a chart prepared by Senator Schumer and his organization that shows how many of the 2.9 million jobs will be saved or created in every state. I mean, that's. That's, it, does that show the 2.9 or the 1.9? That's 2.7. Good, good. good. So this shows you what we're looking at. And again, I thank Senator Schumer for producing this important tool so that every American can see the impact of the jobs. The name of our bill is MAP 21, Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century. It provides a major boost to the construction industry which has been especially hard hit by the recession. According to the most recent unemployment figures, nearly one and a half million construction workers are out of work. This industry, the construction industry, is facing a 17.1% unemployment rate. The national unemployment rate is 8.3. There are enough unemployed people in the construction industry to fill 14 Super Bowl stadiums, like this one. So if you think of this 14 times, that's how many unemployed construction workers there are. And, and I am telling you, whatever Super Bowl it is, doesn't make any difference. What we're talking about is unemployment. When I was a House member, and we have another House member here, Tip O'Neill was a speaker. And Chuck will back me up. Tip O'Neill wanted to get to 218. And he didn't care who got him there. For example, if he knew something in Chuck's district which gave Chuck a hard time voting, he'd go to Chuck and say, can you help me out with the, this bill? And Chuck would say, well, really, it's hard for me to do that. I, I don't think so. And Tip would say, you know what? You vote how you want to vote. I'm going to get the 218. If I have a problem, I'll come back. All Boehner has to do Those is- Those were the nice conversations. Yeah, right. <laughs> And I've had the experience with Tip. I had the experience with Jim Wright. And the fact is, if you couldn't be there, they went and got a Republican. It was fine. And they didn't care. Now what seems to matter is, you know, the purity of the vote count. You know, how many Republicans. That's not what we did here in the Senate at all on this bill. We were bipartisan, and we got 74 votes. So here's the deal. The House is considering a short-term extension. This is disruptive. It creates uncertainty. We have letters from business people. We have letters from the states. It will create havoc. I just did a press conference. I did not a press conference. I did a meeting with all of the various groups. And I have you know, this amazing list I want you to see of the people who worked on this. If you saw this. This is America. This is everyone from the unions to the businesses, everybody in between. They told me they are worried sick 
the business people are worried sick because this is the start of the construction season. And they are laying people off. Some of them are at 50% capacity, our businesses. And the State Departments of Transportation are weighing in. Now, the last point I want to make is about the Ryan budget. And I'm going to be, I'm not mincing words on this. The Ryan Republican budget that was released yesterday in the House signals the death knell for transportation. We will be the only country in the world, the only industrialized nation, that doesn't have a national transportation program if Ryan succeeds. So if you put together the Ryan budget, which cuts transportation by more than 50 percent, along with this notion of these extensions that are not funded, so they're eating into the fund, the fund will be zero in December if all we do is extensions. Then you see what the House is up to, and it is bad news. What Ryan does is he gives a huge benefit to the wealthy few. And who pays for it? Everyone who uses our roads, our freeways, our bridges, our schools, I could go on. But you get the point. What we see over in the House is dithering, equivocation, and signals that they want to destroy the transportation program of this country that was put together by a Republican president, Dwight Eisenhower. I came here uh, really to say three things. Uh, in the last week, this week, uh, I've been in New Jersey with Senator Lautenberg and Senator Menendez talking about passing a, the bipartisan Senate bill. Last evening, I was with a group of engineers from around the country talking about the House passing a bipartisan Senate bill. Uh, this morning, I was with a group of over 800 cyclists who are here in Washington, and I've asked them to ride their bikes to Capitol Hill on the House side. I said, don't waste your time on the Senate. They've already done their work. Ride your bike to the House side, park your bike outside your congressman's office, walk inside, and tell them to pass the Senate bill. So we're going to continue the drumbeat. No extensions. What, what Senator Begich said is absolutely critical. If, if the House were to pass an extension, it would be a death knell for states really getting people back to work quickly on projects that need to be done. It'll be impossible to do. Uh, I've been to every one of these distinguished mem uh, senator states. And I've looked at projects in every one. The last one I was in it was in Rhode Island. I was with the governor of Rhode Island. And I looked up at a bridge that is falling apart. That if the House does not pass the, the bipartisan Senate bill, there's a good possibility the work will not begin on this bridge for a long time. Now why delay it? For the people. This is for the people. This is to put Americans to work, friends and neighbors to work, this, that's what this is about. If the House passes the bipartisan Senate bill, it becomes a jobs bill. People go to work. No extensions. For one day, I'm asking the House, set aside politics for the good of the people. No politics today. Take the Senate bipartisan bill that was passed with 74 votes. I believe 22 Republicans voted for it. And I congratulate Senator Boxer and Senator Anhoff. I call them to congratulate them. They worked hard on behalf of the people. And 74 senators voted for this. 74 spoke for jobs. 74 spoke for getting America back to work. 74 spoke for getting America's economy moving. That's what this bill does. This is a jobs bill. I've heard a lot of great speeches from people that I used to serve with on the Republican side in the House about putting America to work. The quickest, easiest way to do it is to pass the bipartisan Senate bill. Look at today's Wednesday. So set aside politics for the next two days, take the Senate bill, put a House number on it, send it to the Rules Committee and pass it. It's that easy. And, 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 and think of how many people will go to work. It's a two-year bill and it's paid for. No excuses, no politics. This is for America. This is for friends and neighbors. And uh, now's the time to do it. So uh, we can't wait.
We can't wait. Now's the time. Thank you to all of you for your leadership. Thank you for passing the bill.